Welcome back. If you have just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our major stories. Following threats issued to Igbos by a northern group, federal government reassures Nigerians that they can live anywhere in the country without hindrance. Boko Haram gunmen sack Jidari Polo community in Maiduguri, Borno State. Nigerian army troops repel attack. Independent National Electoral Commission approves five new political parties from 95 applications. And massive storm hammers Cape Town in South Africa, leaving a trail of death and destruction in its wake. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. Do also uh, uh, log on to mchannelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has commenced trial of the former director of media and publicity of the PDP presidential campaign organization, Mr. Femi Fanikaude, and three others. Presiding Justice Rilwan Aikawa held that an application filed by Mr. Fanikaude challenging the venue of the proceedings could not stall the commencement of trial. The EFCC had contended that the application was a ploy to stall the trial and urged the court to take it alongside the substantive suit. Our correspondent, Shola Shoele, has that report. Former Aviation Minister Femi Fanikayode, former Finance Minister Nenadi Usman, Juan Danjuma Yusuf and a company, Joint Trust Dimension Nigeria Limited, are facing a 17-count charge of money laundering and alleged diversion of 4.9 billion naira preferred against them by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The trial was to commence afresh before Justice Rilwan Aikawa, but the second defendant, Mr. Fanny Kayode, had filed an application challenging the choice of Lagos as the venue of the proceedings. His counsel, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Norris and Quakers, told the courts that by virtue of Section 8, Subsection 3 of the practice directions of the Federal High Court, which draws validity from Section 490, Subsection G of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, the court was enjoined to take first his application challenging the venue of the proceedings before trial could commence. <laughs> Mr. Fanny Kayode insists that the actions which led to the charge and the alleged offences occurred in Abuja. He therefore wants the suits to be transferred to Abuja which he considers the appropriate venue. The EFCC counsel Rotsimio Yedepo had objections to the application. He submitted that the practice direction was a subsidiary legislation to Section 396 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, which allows the defendant's application to be considered with a substantive suit and a ruling delivered afterwards. He stressed that the court could not make a proper finding on the right venue without considering the substantive issues. In his ruling, Justice Aikawa held that the practice directions are meant to guide the courts and a departure from them will not render a proceedings fatal if done in the overall interest of justice. The judge therefore elected to proceed with trial. He adjourned a fresh application filed by Mr. Fanny Kayode challenging the venue for hearing at the next proceedings. The court also heard and granted the application of another defendant, Senator Nenadius Mann, to be allowed to travel to the U.S. for a period of three weeks for medical treatment. The court then adjourned till Friday the 9th of June for the continuation of the testimony of the first prosecution witness, Shola Shieli, Channels Television News. Time to change gears and we'll move to Abuja where Maupe Ogon is our guide. Good evening, Maupe. Oh, thank you, Ladi. Three bills seeking to reform different parts of the petroleum industry bill. 
petroleum industry, beg your pardon, listed for consideration and second reading in the House of Representatives have been stepped down until next week. Majority Leader of the House, Femi Bajabi Amila, informed the House that members were not prepared for the debate on the bills and some of them had earlier approached him to have the consideration moved to another day. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, reports. Motion say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. I serve it. It's the second plenary session of the week, and lawmakers have a loaded session ahead. One of the first bills to be considered is the bill seeking to establish the Northeast Development Commission. The bill, which is to be responsible for the resettlement, rehabilitation, and integration of victims of insurgency and terrorism, is up for third reading. The bill for an act to provide for the governance and institutional framework for the petroleum industry, which has been consolidated with a similar bill passed by the Senate, is also listed for second reading. The majority leader is invited to lead the debate on the bill. Several members have come and said because of the importance they needed to digest and prepare, and prepare for full debate as they were not fully aware that it was coming up this morning. And so that is why I crave your indulgence after due consultation that this matter be stepped down to Tuesday the 13th of uh, this month. Two other bills, which also seek to reform different parts of the petroleum industry, also follow the same course. The chairman of the House Committee on Rules and Business says the House is under pressure to pass the bills and will do so with time to spare. We have the second read, after second reading, it will go to a standing committee or standing committees of the House, as the case may be. And uh, it shouldn't take more than six months to do a public hearing on, on the matter. Uh, we have the whole of next year. I don't think it will even get to 2019. So uh, now that it's on the cards, now that the Senate has already passed, I think, uh, if you like, we're under pressure to pass this bill, both from the Nigerian public and also. The, the, to, as it were, uh, not be left la lagging behind as far as the, the, this bill is concerned. Consideration of bills seeking to reform the petroleum industry have always been controversial. And on Tuesday, it will be interesting to see if the consideration of these bills will go smoothly. Lanre Lassese, Channel Television News. Meanwhile, the controversial Southeast Development Commission bill has passed a crucial second reading in the Senate. The bill seeks to establish a Southeast Development Commission to tackle the infrastructural deficit in the region. Our correspondent Linda Kigbe reports. Order, members. Order, order. This was the scene in the House of Representatives when the Southeast Development Commission bill was introduced members, on the floor please. for second reading. Order, members. The bill was eventually thrown out as a majority, according to the speaker, rejected the bill. Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. nay. The nays have it. A week later, the Southeast Development Commission bill is on the floor of the Senate, slated for second reading. Some lawmakers from the House of Representatives are in the Senate gallery monitoring the proceedings. We see federal lawmakers moving around the Senate chamber, perhaps lobbying their colleagues to prevent a repeat of what happened to the bill in the House of Representatives. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, yet the, the sponsor of the bill, Senator Sam Anyao, presents the lead debate on the bill. This, this bill seeks to formulate policies and guidelines for the development of the Southeast. It is important to know that this bill, the financial body, is not on the federal government. Its operation will be funded by the 15% of the federal allocation to all its member states. There is no financial implication on the state. Thank you, Mr. President. The Senate President then asked the critical question. Those in favor that this bill be read the second time say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Aye. The ayes have it. Clerk of the Senate. Clerk of the Senate. In doing this, we're showing as, as a Senate that we are ready to listen and look at the, the pros and cons. 
But I think the issues go beyond just this bill. Distinguished colleagues, as you as some celebrate for this, I think there's still more work we need to do. There are people that we are leading that we must go back and play our own role, uniting this country and bringing this. Because development commissions all over the, all over the country might not bring the result that we need. A federal lawmaker from the House of Representatives is delighted that the Southeast Development Commission bill passed second reading in the Senate. I'm happy that it is get through in the Senate, but I'm also not happy that the, seat, the House where I sit you know, couldn't pass the same bill. In the House of Representatives, some lawmakers have vowed that they would reintroduce the bill to give it another chance, but it is not clear when this would happen. The National Assembly had earlier passed a bill establishing the Northeast Development Commission to address the infrastructural challenges and the devastation to the Northeast by Boko Haram. Linda Kibi, Channels Television News. Away from the National Assembly, the Benue state government is enforcing the new kidnap law, which carries a death sentence. The law, which came into force on May the 22nd this year, provides the death penalty once the abducted person dies in the hands of the kidnappers. The first suspect, Isaac Atso, a 33-year-old said to be a kidnapper, will be tried under this new law any time this week. Benue State in the north central part of the country appears to be one of the most affected by kidnapping, herdsmen attack and cult clashes. And to curb this growing trend, Governor Samuel Atom on May 22nd signed the death penalty law for kidnappers. And the police have a test case at hand. Anyone who kidnapped adopt or unlawfully detain another person shall be liable to be sentenced to death. So you hear it very well. That is why I say you should listen to these uh, highlights. Any person who gives himself as a volunteer hostage shall be guilty of, of an offense I shall, on conviction, be sentenced to 10 years in prison. This is Isaac, who allegedly kidnapped a school proprietor in Boko local government, and the law is now taking its course. We laid ambush for them to come. They also got to know that the security was tight on the road, so they decided to change him from one farm to another farm, and that was how he was rescued uh, without paying any ransom. And one of them was arrested. There are four. They are still trailing the others. You know. But as it is, I think this is going to be a trial case since the law has been passed. The law has been signed already. It is a law uh, in the state. And the criminal or whoever that is a culprit is going to be tried under this law. The Attorney General is commending the security agencies for addressing this worrisome trend and is optimistic that the new law will strengthen the war against kidnapping in the state. You cannot have uh, zero uh, cases, but I want to say that generally uh, criminal activities in the state have uh, reduced to uh, their barest minimum. And so if anybody is tried under this new law, and uh, he is convicted and sentenced to death. It depends on his uh, discretion. With the enforcement of this new law, Benue people believe that kidnapping incident may now reduce, given the fact that those caught and subsequently tried will face death penalty. When the news at 10 returns, Building Solutions provider Lafarge Africa PLC holds annual shareholders meeting in Lagos, where states groups continued confidence in Nigeria. To join us again.